Hey everyone, and welcome to another scroll saw video. Today I don't have any large projects that we're working on, but I do want to share a couple of smaller projects, a work in process, and answer a question that a viewer had about the accessories that I use on the Dremel for sanding. So let's get started. So I'm going to try something a little bit different today. Instead of doing a sped up version of all of the cutting on the projects, I'm going to do some regular speed footage of this part and then some sped up of a second project later. For the first project, I'm going to cut four pieces of 1 8 inch Baltic birch plywood and I'm going to do this pattern that I found on Facebook by somebody named Jim Bloom. He does a lot of cool patterns and he it looks like he gives them all away for free so I really recommend uh, checking his stuff out and cutting some of his patterns. One of the things that's extremely important whenever you're doing stack cut materials is to keep the blade square. Keeping the blade square is important no matter what type of project you're working on, but when you're stack cutting it's especially critical because if your blade is out of square, you may be following the pattern at the top piece, but the bottom piece may be much smaller or larger and overlap holes or different issues that you wouldn't have when it's square. For the Baltic birch plywood, I'm using a number 5 regular reverse blade. It's not a skip tooth. This is what I had in the number 5, and uh, I think it did a pretty good job. Doing a lettering project like this is one of the situations where I think it's extremely important to be careful how you're following the line. Obviously the best case scenario would be we all cut perfectly on the line and we get a beautiful letter that comes out with no variation, but I know for me and probably a lot of you too, that's just not really possible. So in these situations where we do veer off the line, I think it's best to try to keep it looking smooth and organic because unlike some other patterns with segmentation, for example, where people don't really know what the pattern looks like once you're done cutting it, letters are something that everybody has experience with. So you have to try your best to keep a smooth, natural flow for the letters rather than making sharp adjustments and trying to do a hard correction Normally when I've done fine line work like this, I've used a like a number one or a very small blade. But in this case, when I'm stack cutting four pieces, it's at about a oh half an inch or real close to a half an inch thick. And I didn't think my number one regular tooth blades would be good for this. So I used a number three spiral blade. And as you can see, I tend to walk around a little bit. Spirals can be a challenge. There's something to get used to. It's hard to get a perfectly straight line. But given the look of the pattern and the sort of organic flowing lines and amorphous shape of the oil can here, I thought that the spiral blade would do an okay job. So that's what I went with. As you see, I think it does. Uh, I think it does okay. I'm not really great with the spiral blades. There are some people who can do really nice work with it, and I'm going to continue to practice with them as needed. But it's just, uh, it's not something that I'm that good with yet.
there you have it. I think that this was a really neat pattern. I thought it was very funny. I enjoyed it, and I've actually already sold one uh, to a friend who thought it was funny as well. So I think this is a great pattern to do for the shop or for a gift or for somebody's man cave or garage. Really enjoyed doing this one. Next, we're going to move into a pattern that I created. As I mentioned on a previous video, I really enjoy doing animal patterns, and I also enjoy doing intarsia pieces. So, after finishing the ducklings that you saw in the last video, I searched for a picture, um, a free-to-use picture, free-to-use and modify, picture of a fat cardinal, and this is what I found. After finding the picture, the first thing that I did was trace it out using Inkscape, which is a free-to-use uh, vector artwork that's sort of similar to Adobe Illustrator. And after drawing it out, tracing all the parts, I ended up making different masks so that I could see approximately what the pattern would look like using different color wood images that you see here. Before we get started cutting, here's a couple pictures that I shared on Instagram of the pattern laid out and the first section of the pattern put on the wood. One of the things that I'm trying to do with the patterns that I create is orient the pieces in the same direction that I want the wood grain to go once I dissect the pattern. I think it makes it easier, as you can see on the image here that's been blue taped, it makes it easier to lay it out and cut all the pieces and get the correct grain orientation that I want. I post pictures on Instagram a couple times a week of projects and process and different things like that. I do also include other things beyond just scroll saw, but uh, that's most of my projects. So if you're interested in that, feel free to follow me. I'm at Van Siceworks on Instagram. It's the same name as the YouTube channel. In the scroll saw group on Reddit, somebody asked, is cedar a good wood to use for doing scroll saw? And I thought that uh, I would answer yes. I think cedar is a great wood, for, especially for intarsia, but you can do fretwork with it. You can do segmentation with it. You have to be careful because it is fairly soft, so you don't want to do very fine thin fretwork. You can do things with a lot of inside holes, but you want to leave enough thickness and enough width of the fretwork so that it doesn't fall apart. Um, here you can see uh, I'm using, like I mentioned previously, the pattern laid out with the grain orientation already determined. Something you might have noticed if you were looking at the pattern is uh, the first pattern I indicated that this would be done out of Red Heart or maybe Paduk uh, to get the red color of a cardinal. But for this pattern I had a piece of cedar that was already planed to the size that I wanted so I thought that I would give it a shot. My plan now is to mirror image the pattern and do it again out of Paduk so I can have like a female and a male cardinal together as a matched pair. I think the combination of the cedar and the yellow heart in the beak and claws gives it a really good look for a female cardinal and I'm really looking forward to uh, doing the final finishing on this project. Here's a couple of pictures now of the project in process uh, cut out and then with the mostly finished rough sanding. A comment somebody posted on Facebook when I posted my video for last week was what type of accessories am I using to do the sanding with the Dremel, uh, sanding and shaping. So I decided I wanted to share a little bit more of a close-up and show you exactly what I'm using. Here you can see the Dremel that I got. I got this from a yard sale a while back. I love buying from yard sales and on Facebook and Craigslist. I think you can find a lot of really good stuff for a really good value. Um, I recently added the flex shaft that you see here. Um, this thing is a lot easier, much, much easier than holding on to the, the Dremel itself. It cuts way down on the vibration and it's a lot easier to handle. Um, the primary accessories that I've been using are these sanding drums that slip over a rubber sleeve and uh, you turn a screw down to tighten and it expands the drum out to hold the sleeve, as well as these carbide rotary files. Um, I was using some other 
rotary files that I had in a kit, but um, I wanted some different shapes, so I bought this actual kit on Amazon for I think about $15, and it's been really nice. I'll include some pictures in next week's video showing the finished product here. I still need to do a little bit more sanding at finer grits and then do the backer and the clear coat. But now I want to show you a couple of pictures for some things I picked up for my basement office here. I picked up this wide format printer. It's an older HP. It'll print 24 inches wide off of a roll of paper. So it'll be very helpful in doing larger intarsia projects and other woodworking projects. I also have uh, found a drafting table that I need to do a little bit of work on to get it to stand upright, but uh, sometimes when I'm laying out my patterns, it's really nice to be able to see it uh, not laid out on one of the tables that I'm going to be working. So I hope you enjoyed the video this week. I know it's a little bit different than what I've done before, so if you have any feedback, please share it with me here uh, in the comments. You can direct message me or on Instagram at Van Sice Works. Thank you. Have a great day.